I'm sick and tired of wasting my time coming here, bringing all the people working for you, and you do nothing. You're overeating, eating too much. Okay, I won't overeat anymore. I will make sure that I, it's, okay. it's the 1,200 calories because I'm gonna prove you wrong that I can do this. I'm gonna do it. Everybody's different, but the instruction for everybody is the same. Look, help is you. It's not me. I know that this is my last chance. I know that I'm dying. I know that I'm not going to make it. Hold on to your seats, folks, because Dolly Martinez's story is a wild ride filled with drama, dark turns, and a sprinkle of sheer chaos. Picture this. Dolly, only 25 years old, already facing the daunting specter of congestive heart failure and dependence on oxygen. It's like a bad joke that you just can't laugh at. She knew something had to change, so she sought out Dr. Now. Seriously, imagine needing help just to breathe. That was Dolly's grim reality right from the start. Hello, everyone. Before we dive into the jaw-dropping moments when Dr. Now absolutely loses his cool, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, you won't want to miss the wild stories and dramatic confrontations from my 600-pound life that we uncover. Ready to see Dr. Now snap like never before? Let's get started. And my feet, and my lower back, and my head. I can't even get out of bed anymore without needing help. Shy, shy. I live with my mother, but my best friend, Cheyenne, helps me when she's here sometimes. Good morning. Morning. Cheyenne is a big girl like me too, so she understands where I'm coming from. Daily Grind was a bizarre mix of TV binges, endless snacking, and epic nap sessions. Eight hours glued to the screen, fueled by sugar and more sugar. If there was a medal for most sedentary lifestyle, she would have snagged gold. Her diet? Let's just say the candy aisle was her playground. Brownies, ice cream, every sweet treat you can imagine. Dolly even admitted sugar was her cocaine and heroin. That's not just a sweet tooth, that's a sugar beast unleashed. And I liked the feeling I had when I was eating. My mom would find the wrappers and get mad at me, but there's nothing she could do, really. The kindergarten. I was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder oppositional defiant disorder, and bipolar disorder. I know that I am a little special ed because I have mental issues, but teachers made me feel like I was more special ed than I am. And here's a twist that will make you raise an eyebrow. Dolly's husband, he actually preferred her at a larger size. Yep, you heard that right. He married her because of her weight and wasn't thrilled when she started losing it. Instead of being her rock, he was more like a boulder blocking her path. Who needs enemies with a spouse like that, right? I had just turned 21 and I was 400 pounds. But I didn't have much income, and I didn't have no place to live. And that's when I met Ricky, the man that I married. On a social media chat thread, turned out we had something in common. Because Ricky didn't have anywhere to go either. Ricky lived close to me, so we met in person. And not long after that, he invited me to come stay with him in his bedroom at his mom's. Because that's where he was living at the time. And then I was like, okay took a turn for the worse when their daughter was born. Just six days into parenthood, Child Protective Services swooped in and took the baby away. Dolly and her husband couldn't provide a safe environment. Enter Stacy, Dolly's mom, who had to step in and pick up the pieces. Can you imagine the emotional roller coaster? It's like watching a soap opera where the hits just keep coming. I had a baby girl named Trinity. She's the most precious thing in ever. <laughs> She's a beautiful child, beautiful spirit. She's just full of life and full of energy. I certainly didn't know three years ago I was going to be a mama, basically, again. I was given this child by CPS when she was six days old. 
now about that first weigh-in with Dr. Now. Dolly tipped the scales at a staggering 593 pounds. Despite the chaos at home, she made an effort to reconnect with her mom, but ended up back with her less than supportive husband. Fast forward a bit, and Dolly found herself in a homeless shelter. That's where she met Philip. Sparks flew, and within six weeks, they were engaged. Never mind the lack of a stable home, love finds a way, right? Or does it? Well, me and Philip finally found a house to move into. It took a lot longer to find an option we could afford than I thought it would. But we finally found one, which means I can go back and see Dr. Now. I was putting off my appointment with him until we found a place because I knew he was going to give me a hard time. Dolly's chaotic life meant she struggled to lose enough weight to get Dr. Now's approval for the surgery she desperately needed. In nearly a year, she managed to shed only 40 pounds. That's not just a slow crawl. It's more like moving in reverse on a treadmill. Dr. Now, ever the realist, couldn't give her the green light for surgery. Can you blame him? You can't operate on what's essentially a ticking time bomb of health issues and instability. That's not reality. The reality is that you're choosing the support system with the people you don't really know. After you rejected the support system you needed with your mom. So mom, what happened that she left home? I was told that I'm too controlling. I've encouraged her since she moved in with me to not overeat and to not eat what she shouldn't and to focus on herself. All right, let's dive into the tangled web that is Jean's journey on the show where Dr. Nauzeridan had more than a few reasons to snap. Jean, 48 years old and utterly dependent on her parents for everything, was in a situation you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. Seriously, imagine needing help for everything every single day. It's like living in a never-ending sitcom, except there's no laugh track, just a cloud of sadness hanging over everything. Because it's very important, I try to stay as clean as I can. Since there's a lot of areas of my body that rub and chafe and cause these sores to form and open up on me. And I can't let them get infected. especially the area under my stomach because of how it hangs down and rubs against me there. Jean's backstory? Buckle up, folks, because it's a doozy. Raised by a grandmother who should have been reading bedtime stories but instead dealt out physical abuse, Jean's childhood was a horror show. And as if that wasn't enough, her mother's boyfriend decided to add sexual abuse to the mix. It's like a twisted, dark fairy tale where the evil characters actually win. So where did Jean find solace? Food glorious food, her only friend in a world that seemed determined to break her spirit. You gotta wonder how anyone survives such a start. Because that's when I had a really traumatic experience. My mom had started dating someone then, and he molested me. It was only a one-time thing, but the one time did damage. I remember sitting on the floor watching TV, and he came, and he sat right down beside me. And he said, this will be our little secret. And he said, don't ever tell your mom because she won't believe you. So I just, with everything else, I just pushed that down and, you know. Fast forward to a critical point in Jean's life. A life-threatening infection landed her in the hospital where she managed to shed 53 pounds. But then the real kicker, she had to continue her weight loss journey solo, aiming to lose another 100 pounds. And life, being the cruel jester that it is, threw her a curveball, leading to a gain of 29 pounds instead. It's like running a marathon only to find out you're on a treadmill. Frustration doesn't even begin to cover it. So all you needed to do was lose the remaining 50 pounds in six weeks on your own to get down to your overall goal I gave you. But instead, you gained back 29 pounds. Yes. Can you tell me what happened? I mean, I had a day that I went over the 1,200 calories. So one bad day and you gained 30 pounds? I, Is that what you're telling me now? Okay, wait a minute. 
You see the evidence of what you lose when you're on diet and eating what you should. Doctor now gave Jean another chance. She was confident, even cocky about her progress. She bragged she'd show off her weight loss at the next checkup. But reality, my friends, is a brutal teacher. Over two months, Jean lost just eight pounds. Eight. Was she even trying? Following the diet? Or just playing weight loss, hide and seek? Dr. Now's patients must be made of steel because anyone else would have thrown in the towel. You were given the same goal as the first time to lose 100 pounds in two months. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In the stand, you lost eight pounds. The only positive with that is that at least you didn't gain, but it's not much of a loss. So what is your case this time? I try to push myself as much as I possibly can, but I've started having a lot of pain with the lump on the side of my stomach. This is like really extremely painful. And my mom started having complications from a surgery she had last year. What complications are you having, Barbara? It's really bothering me. Then came the tragedy. Jean's father passed away, plunging her into a grief so deep she abandoned her diet and sought comfort in food again. It's a vicious cycle, grief eating leading to weight gain, leading to more grief. It's enough to make you scream at the screen. Come on, Jean, pull it together. Can she, or is she destined to repeat this self-destructive loop? <laughs> The sheriffs told me that my dad, in fact, was deceased. Um, it looked like he just went to sleep and just didn't wake up. <gasps> I don't think it has really, really hit me. It's a lot to, it's a lot to process. I'm worried about my mom. She's really upset. Now, let's add another layer of drama. Jean's mother fell ill, leaving her to face gastric surgery alone. And in a twist that could only happen in real life, Jean sued the production company of My 600 Pound Life. She claimed they broke promises to cover her mother's medical expenses. It's like a legal drama and a reality show had a messy love child. So we called to have a wellness check made on him and they found him in his bed and he had passed away. I just can't believe he's gone. And to be honest, the diet is the last thing I'm worried about right now. How could I really even worry about that when I'm going through one of the most painful moments of my life? But my mom is still recovering from her surgery and I'm still getting over the last part of my infection. So we have to be careful. Enjoying the drama so far? Give us a thumbs up and let us know your thoughts in the comments. And if you think Jean made Dr. Now snap, wait till you hear the story of Lacey Buckingham. Her journey takes drama to a whole new level with twists you won't believe. Lacey wasn't just facing a mountain of health issues like diabetes, sky-high cholesterol, and blood pressure that could blow a gasket. Nope, her bones were practically weeping under the massive weight they had to support. Imagine feeling like a lumbering T-Rex, taking giant steps but moving slower than a snail in molasses. Yep, that's Lacey's life in a nutshell. Heat rash in places that never goes away no matter how clean I am. I have stabbing pain in my feet and really dull, crushing pain in my lower back. It's not a fun time. My right knee is the worst pain I've ever had in my life. I struggle with diabetes high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and it's all because of my weight. Lacey's physical battles were just the tip of the iceberg. Her childhood was a minefield of emotional trauma, with a father who had more anger issues than a bull in a china shop, and a mother who made it clear that Lacey was an unwelcome surprise. Life wasn't exactly a bed of roses. Born despite her mom's IUD efforts, Lacey was often reminded she was the family's unwanted guest. If that doesn't mess with your head, I don't know what will. When I was writing Christmas cards, I'd get really emotional. That told me, oh my gosh, I think I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> when I was very young, she told me that I was an IUD baby in an accident. It made me feel like a disaster. 
So my self-esteem was disgustingly low. But the traumas didn't stop there. Now, imagine being in third grade and experiencing something as horrific as rape, only to have your own mother dismiss your pain. That's when food became more than just sustenance for Lacey. It was her escape, her comfort. Food was the silent therapist who never judged or denied her. And we're playing one day and he wanted me to go to his house. And when I went over, his older brother lived in the basement and I was dragged to the basement by my friend for his older brother to have sex with me. It was a horrific experience. I didn't know what to do. I didn't think anyone would believe me, so I never told anyone about this. When Lacey first appeared on the show, she was tipping the scales at 593 pounds. Enter Ricky, her partner in crime. Ricky seemed like the real MVP, always ready to whip up a meal or help her with daily tasks. But let's be real here. Was he a supportive partner or just another enabler? Not just to have somebody to help me, but because I know he loves me. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm just uh, chatting with my sister. The girls say hi. Hi, girls. These sandwiches are so finger sucking good. Thank you, babe. It's the first time I feel loved as with a boy, really. Determined to turn her life around, Lacey met Dr. Now, who laid down the law with a daunting goal. Lose 50 pounds in one month. Initially, she was off to a good start, but then life threw her some wicked curveballs. Missed appointments and a return to those comforting, albeit destructive eating habits had her sliding back into old patterns. The big question was, could she break free from years of emotional eating? We'll break down at 1200 calories a day, low carb, high protein diet that you need to follow completely. Okay. And understand to correct your eating habit, and I'm going to give you some exercises that you can do at home. And I want you to do those twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. So in two months, you need to lose 50 pounds. That won't be hard to do at all. Okay. Things got so tense between Lacey and Ricky that she ended up calling the cops on him and his sister, Sharon. She felt so unsafe around them that this showdown happened on the road back to Houston, leaving Lacey abandoned on the roadside. Talk about a dramatic twist. Or in my case, she's trying to blame me for abusing her. Get whatever the she needs off my U-Haul and her is gone. You watch it, it will be at the you haul place. Woman, you don't even know what you just did. I'm not a abuser person. I am the realest, nicest. But let's talk about the weight loss program. Lacey was supposed to be on a strict diet, but those pounds just refused to budge. Doctor now gave her another shot at meeting her weight loss goals, but the universe had other plans it became clear that sticking to the plan wasn't in the cards for Lacey, leading Dr. Now to make the tough decision to remove her from the program. She just couldn't commit to the necessary changes. You know, you have the guidance that we give you, and you have to use that. And if you don't follow that, there's nothing we can do to change that, okay? Yes. So stick with the healthy eating habit, Read the stuff we gave you every night and check out and see what you did wrong and don't make those mistakes tomorrow. Yes, okay? sir. You think you can do that? Yes. Keeney couldn't stand up by herself for more than a pitiful 45 seconds. Yeah, you heard that right, folks. Even a simple bathroom trip was like assembling a team for a moon landing. Her nieces, Alicia and Deja, were the MVPS of shower time, while her nephew played the critical role of walking assistant. Can you imagine needing a whole crew just to freshen up? It's mind-blowing how these everyday struggles pushed her to a path she never imagined. I'm ready to get washed up. Alicia is 16. If I'm gonna take a good shower, Alicia helps. Or if Deja's here, she helps. Deja is 19 and she's in college, so she's in and out of the house here. You can't be 600 pounds and have too much pride. If you know, your teenagers are helping you take a shower to keep you from smelling. Now, let's hit 
with the rewind button. By the tender age of 10, Kine was already tipping the scales at over 150 pounds. By 13, she was cruising between 230 to 240 pounds. But despite her weight, high school was a breeze. She was dating, went to prom, and lived what she considered a normal, happy life. In her eyes, her weight was just a number, so she kept munching away, oblivious to the ticking time bomb inside her. Talk about blissful ignorance, right? So I was happy in high school. I dated. I went to prom, so I didn't see a reason to change how I ate. So I kept eating more and gaining weight. And I graduated from high school at 17. I was well over 350 pounds, but I was still able to manage pretty well at that time. And I got a job at a nursing home after high school to start working and providing for myself. After high school, Keeney got a job and moved out. But guess what? With her newfound independence came an escalation in her fast food adventures and binge eating sessions. Before long, 400 pounds was her new normal. Did she care? Not a bit. As long as she could move, everything was peachy in Keeney's world. But oh, how the plot thickens. So my eating habits changed for the worst, and it was at that time my weight had gotten up to around 400 pounds. But I didn't feel bad because I could still move around pretty good. I was still moving and working and, you know, walking around and not hurting. It just didn't really bother me. Kine had dreams of starting a bigger family, but her weight was causing infertility and other health issues. Then life decided to hit her with a double whammy. She lost her mom and a tornado destroyed her house. Talk about a rough patch. These tough times drove her to seek comfort in food even more. You won't believe how these adversities pushed her towards making a life-changing decision. I just always figured that once I found someone that I wanted to settle down with, I'd get pregnant, we'd have kids, we'd go on with life. But I wasn't getting pregnant. I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and it did attribute to weight gain, and that devastated me. My husband never pressured me about my weight, about giving him children. I just wanted to give him children. At 41, Kenny finally decided it was time for a change and sought out the legendary doctor now. Her starting weight, a jaw-dropping 614 pounds. Dr. Now, with his no-nonsense attitude, prescribed a strict 1,200-calorie diet and daily exercise, setting an ambitious goal of shedding 75 pounds in two months. Easier said than done, especially when you're the one in charge of food at home. Can you smell the irony? The dynamic seems to be that you get everyone to enable you, and you use them as a crutch, and it sounds like that is affecting their health too. So would you agree with that? I can, I'll use them as a crutch because I do prepare food for my family, and I do prepare large quantities of food for my family, but we could, use, we could choose better options. Okay. I could choose better options because I'm the one that by her second visit, Kine weighed 592 pounds. She had only lost 22 pounds in two months instead of the target of 75. When Dr. Now confronted her, she got defensive, saying, you're not a magician and you're not a god. You're just a doctor. Oh, the tension in that room could cut through steel. I never asked you for magic. You're not a magician and you are not God. You are a doctor. You're exactly right. I'm the doctor who's telling you how to get healthy. And so what's the purpose of you coming and seeing us and not following the diet and do what you need to save your life? Because everything is up to you, it's not up to us. Stop it, stop, stop. Stop. Despite the rocky start, Kine agreed to stick to the 1,200 calorie diet. Dr. Now sent her to a psychotherapist, Dr. Paradise, who suggested she write a letter to her late mom to process her grief. It was a therapeutic move to help Kine deal with her emotional baggage. Let's see if it would help her turn things around. I was never able to get any closure from losing her because of my size. I couldn't go to her burial and say goodbye. And it's one of my biggest regrets that I let my weight get so out of hand that I couldn't do that. So I want to make that right. 
and I want to say all the things I never got to say to her. Keeney's emotional and physical transformation journey reached a critical milestone. By her third appointment, she weighed 543 pounds and was given a new goal. But the dreams of surgery were put on hold due to health concerns signaled by high white blood cell counts. The big question remained, would her dreams of a new beginning ever come true? Before you go, if you loved watching Dr. Now handle these outrageous situations, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more jaw-dropping stories from My 600 Pounds Life. Drop a comment below on which moment shocked you the most and share this video with your friends to spread the drama. Stay tuned for more incredible transformations and unforgettable moments. Rapid heartbeat and atrial fibrillation and that is something that we need to be concerned because with that issue you won't survive surgery. And the reality is with this issue your body is getting close to a breaking point. And right now, you're not going to live very long unless you lose a lot more weight before things get worse. And we're not going to be able to do surgery to help you with that until you lose enough weight to alleviate the strain on your heart to where you would be able to survive it. You get that? Yes, sir.